Uh, if you want to put mount this piece with like a dowel on there, but also you want to mount something because if you're putting this on the top of the head, you know it's going to roll like that. Okay. So what I did is I had these little magnets and I basically just taped them on there. It doesn't necessarily have to be a magnet, but something so that you see how this is more stable now. Okay. So normally I'd be standing on the other side so I could read these. But basically you want to have these on the zero point on each of them. Okay. And then I want you to bend your head forward, bring your chin toward your chest as far as you can. So then I would take a reading of this number, and then I subtract whatever this reading is. And then come back up. So why would I subtract the reading off of this one? Is that spinal, not cervical, or I mean thoracic? Or, yeah, thoracic, right. Okay, and then extension basically is gonna be the reverse. So I want you to bend back. Okay, and then come back. So if you don't have these little things on here, then you can basically kind of do it with your fingers underneath like that to stabilize it. I'll roll up the pick towel or something like that. Okay. And then now I want you to turn and face this way, turn your whole body over. So we're going to do lateral flexion. This is going to be at C7, T1. This is going to be at the top of the head here. Then I want to bend your head to the side, bring your ear towards your shoulder. And then same thing on the side. Okay. And so rotation, you only need one of them here, and you're going to go like this. You put this on the forehead, and then I want you to turn your head to one side. And then the other side. That's how to do it with inclinometers. So when you have a goniometer, you have three different terms that you talk about with it. You have the fulcrum, and then you have a fixed arm and a mobile arm. Okay. And then you're going to be taking readings on these numbers here. Okay. So you want to start out where, wherever you have your, your goniometer fixed like this, whether it's this way or this way. There's always going to be on one of these scales, usually there's going to be somewhere where you can see a zero point. So then you're going to make a note of that, because like, I could either read from a zero over here or over here. And then you measure your range, and so that tells you which one of these scales to use. Okay? So whatever was zero to start with, then you're going to use that to measure the range. So now there's two different ways you can do it for a cervical range of motion, two different reference points you can use. One method is to use the external auditor meatus, which is basically <coughs> the hole in your ear. So that's going to go where the fulcrum is. Then the fixed arm is going to be either vertical or parallel to the floor. And then this other one is going to line up with the base of the nose right here. So normally I'd be over here looking at it, but I'm just going to guesstimate it. And then when the person is moving like this, you don't necessarily have to follow it exactly how they move. What you just want to do is have a beginning point, and then when they get to the end point, then you, know, you can zero it in and get it on the right spot. Okay. So I want you to bend your head forward as far as you can. So. This would be lined up with the base of the nose. Am I very close? And then come back up. And then bend backwards. So now you're going to have an extension like this. So does the center of that thing supposed to stay with the center it's of the ear? supposed to stay. But again, whenever, you're, whenever the, the fulcrum, it's OK if it moves. Because, and you'll see maybe when we do lateral flexion, we'll explain that. But basically, what's more important is to have the uh, mobile arm lined up where it's supposed to line up. Okay. Then the other method is to, you have a line basically where you'd be wearing your, where, if you're wearing glasses, where the edge of the glasses would be, which is basically on the, I don't know what's the, what's the term for this part on the ear? You know? 
just like right where your glasses would sit. Anyway, and then to the outer canthus, which is the corner of the eye here. So you have a, a fixed line in space right here. So then you're going to use that to line it up right here. And then punch it then forward. And then bend back. You line that up like that. So again, as long as this is lined up where it's supposed to be, it's okay if this thing moves around, if the fulcrum um, moves a little bit. Okay, but it's, there's always going to be something written in the in the procedure that's going to say where the fulcrum is. But it's okay to, if you need to move around a little bit. So let's have you come over and sit here and fix that. One. So now for lateral flexion, the fulcrum is going to be at C7 T1. And then this is going to be along the spinous process of the thoracic spine, and this is going to be the EOP, or the external occipital protuberance. And then let's have you bend to the side. So here's where you can see what, what's more important is this to line up with the neck. So if I move this back and forth, you're not really changing the angle. Whatever's going to help you to get a better sighting or a better reading on here. So I'd want to move that like that. So as long as it's vertical, it doesn't have to line up exactly over the spinous process. So you can have some flexibility in moving it across to get a better read. Okay, then let's go to the other side. Okay. So it's about that. And then let's use a, let's grab a chair for doing the rotation. So now where the, the fulcrum is going to be over the center of the head and then the fixed arm is going to be on an imaginary line drawn between the two chromiums. So it's basically going to line it up with the torso. And then the mobile arm is going to line up to the tip of the nose. So we're going to be like this. Okay. I want you to turn your head to one side as far as you can. All right, so you're going to look down so that it's lined up at the tip of the nose, and this is going to stay lined up across the shoulders. And then, same thing over here. Okay. And then let's do the same thing again where you're laying on your back with your head here. So, you can see so then again, the fulcrum is going to be over the center of the head, and then this is going to be on a line between the shoulders. And then this is going to line up at the tip of the nose. So I want you to turn your head to one side. And then to the other side. And again, if I was looking down on this, I could line it up a little bit better. I may be a little bit off. But you understand that basically this wants to be lined up with the line between the shoulders. And then this is going to line up with the tip of the nose. Biceps is going to be like this, and then brachioradialis, you can either do it here or here, and then triceps, like that. Okay, so we'll do it from the other side. You don't have to do both of these here, like if you get it there, that's fine. Okay, sometimes if you have trouble doing the triceps, you can also do it a little bit better like this. And then the other thing is, is sometimes I see people doing their reflexes and then they're going like this. It's more of a flick like this, okay? So you don't want to go like this to do the reflex. It's more just a tap like that. Okay. Right, let's do 